on his number plate. Marty Smith is a three-time AMA national champion. In short, Marty is an American motocross legend. Marty's pro career spanned three decades, and in that time he has developed an internationally recognized motocross school, trained numerous industry talents, and in the spring of 2004, he became the coach of the AMA-ranked motorsport outlet racing team. Featuring Justin Bucklew, Tiger Lacey, Sean Collier, Craig Anderson, and three time Canadian national champion Jean Sebastian Watt. Thirty years after his first national championship title, Marty Smith is still living the American dream. Living it, breathing it, and sleeping it. Marty Smith is American Motocross. Hey, I'm Marty Smith. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the techniques that helped me win three AMA Outdoor National Championships. Let's go moto! What I'm going to be covering in this video is starts, cornering, body positioning, and jumps. There's a lot of good information in this video, so good luck. The first thing we're going to cover is starting. Starting obviously is very important, and a couple of things that help you get a good start are clutch activation and body positioning. Here's a technique I always use on the start that works really well. Remember, don't pull the clutch in all the way back to your knuckles or to the grip because you've got this much play where nothing's actually happening. What you do is you put the bike in gear as the 30 second sign goes up. You let the, bike go, let the clutch go out until the bike starts to roll. And then you bring it back in until the bike stops rolling. And that's where you keep your clutch. Remember, on the start with your fingers on the clutch, don't keep four fingers or three fingers. You either keep one finger or two fingers. I always keep two and then I hold on with these other two right here. That way, when the bike starts to pull, you've got a way to hold on. You can still activate the clutch. Another thing for the fingers on the clutch is if the bike starts to wheelie a little bit, you don't have to let off the throttle. You can just feather the clutch in a little bit and keep the throttle pinned and that way the motor won't fall off the pipe. I got started in motocross in about 1973. Uh, my dad took me to the races uh, at Carlsbad, California. And there I was, 14 years old, 15 years old, and uh, my first motocross race. Loved it from there on out. I got a fifth overall my very first uh, junior race, and um, actually turned into uh, turned pro by, the, by that time the next year. I signed a contract with American Honda Motor Company and uh, took off and did the nationals and that's the year that I won my first national championship. Well the first time Honda uh, made any contact with, with me at all was um, I had just won a, a, a national event. I was the only guy there on a Swedish bike called the Monarch. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the Monarchs but uh, after I won the event we drove home that day and um, the next day I was like too tired to go to school and so I stayed home and about nine o'clock in the morning the phone rings and it was uh, 
one of the one of the head guys at American Honda, and they said, "Hey, uh, would you be interested in riding for us next year? We have a um, an AMA Outdoor National uh, Classic that you could ride. Would you be interested?" And I said, "Absolutely." So that's how it started. Um, I lived the life of a rock star, basically. You know, they flew me in, had rental cars, hotel waiting, um, had a brand new sixty thousand dollar motorcycle waiting for me with a mechanic ready to work on it. Um, doesn't get any better than that and they paid me to do it. One of the most important aspects of starting is body positioning. Without proper body positioning there's almost no way you're gonna get a whole shot. You have two leg positions for starts. For cement, concrete starts, you keep your feet behind the foot pegs. For dirt starts, you slide up a little bit farther and keep your feet in front of the foot pegs. On concrete starts the reason you keep your feet behind the foot pegs is to keep as much rear wheel weight as you can get. In order to get maximum rear wheel traction I always put a little weight on the bike and if you watch my feet are barely touching the ground but watch I'm gonna release watch the rear of the bike come up and it goes down and also if you notice my back is is a little bit leaning towards the back of the bike so what you do is when the 30 second board goes sideways the rear of the bike goes down I'm holding pressure inside the inside of my thighs and all the way up to my crotch I'm pushing down that's what's keeping the weight pushed down on the rear of the motorcycle you do that as a 30 second board goes sideways, all right? And you keep it pressed down until you get off the concrete. Once you get onto the dirt, everything's back to normal. You shift your weight back, the C in your back. You stay forward, but you transfer your weight so you can get rear wheel traction. For dirt starts, traction is not as much a problem. So you keep your feet in front of the foot pegs and your weight over the front of the bike to keep the bike from wheeling. <laughs> Gear selection is just another one of the many things that you need to put together to find that perfect pull shot. The reason gear selection is so important, if you're in too low of a gear, the bike's gonna get too much wheel spin, and if you're in too high of a gear, it's gonna bog. Second gear is always the best gear if your bike will pull it. If your bike won't pull a second gear start, then you gotta start in first. You need to get in second gear as quickly as possible out of the gate, and vice versa. If you start in second gear, you need to go as to third gear as quickly as you can pull third gear. The quicker that you can get to the higher gears, the better start you're going to get. And now we're at Motor World of El Cajon. These guys are my main sponsor. Give me all my bikes and inside they have a couple of my race jerseys that I won the number one plate with, Team Honda. So come in and check it out. It's pretty cool. This is a jersey and the helmet I wore in 1974 when I won my first outdoor championship. And this is my uh, helmet and jersey that I wore in 1978 after I won my 1977 500 title. Not much face protection there. After 20 years of teaching motocross schools, what I find is that cornering seems to be everybody's biggest problem. The first thing we'll be covering about cornering is entering a turn. As you enter a turn, you keep your feet pretty much close to the balls of your feet, but it's not critical as you're entering a turn. Okay, Your butt is over the number plates pretty much right here. What that does is that keeps weight over the rear of the bike to help you get braking traction. You want maximum braking traction so you can charge the turn harder, okay? You stay in this position 
all the way pretty much till about what we call the apex of the turn. The apex is right about the middle of the turn. That's about the point where you sit down and apply the power to come out of the turn. All right. When you sit down and apply the power, you don't go here and then slide forward. You go from the braking position right to the cornering position right here. Let's say I'm taking a right hand turn. Notice how the ball of my foot is positioned on the foot peg. What that does, it helps keep pressure with my knee into the shroud, which in turn helps the bike corner better. As you can see here, I'm charging the corner and my butt is over the number plate as I'm braking. I've now made the transition from standing to sitting at about the apex of the turn. A huge part of going fast and carrying corner speed is gear selection going in and coming out of turns. Braking is also equally important for going through and coming out of turns. Another common problem that I see a lot in riders is on the entrance to turns, a lot of guys seem to want to pull their clutch in and lock up the back tire going in. That's totally incorrect. What's happening there is you're losing all your braking power. All right, You need to leave the clutch alone and use the gear selection along with your front and back brake to enter a turn. So in other words, if you want to slow down more, kick it down a gear. And you do not need to clutch to kick it down because you're off the throttle anyway. So go ahead and kick it down a gear. Each time you need to slow down, kick it down a gear. And as you get to the turn, if you think you're in too low of a gear to pull out, just as you sit, you bring it up, get into that gear that's going to pull good through and coming out, and then go right back to your turning position. Okay, as you can see, right about the apex of the turn is when you sit and apply the power to accelerate out of the turn. Also another misconception guys have about going into a turn is do I just use the front brake or just, do I just use the back brake? You need both brakes at the same time. And on the front brake, it's one finger. One finger. Just the tip of your finger on the brake. Don't grab it down here, you grab too much. And if you use two fingers or three fingers, sometimes that's going to be definitely too much going into a turn. These brakes are very touchy and if one finger doesn't activate your front brake, then you need to readjust it to make sure that it does work with one finger. One finger is by far the best. And if you want to step over to this side of the motorcycle, I'll instruct to you that it's exactly the same going into a left-hand turn. The only difference is, is you need to remember that you have the brake on the right side of the motorcycle. And a common problem is a lot of guys come into the turn and they keep their foot off the foot peg and they try to just keep their toe on the brake pedal. And what happens there, it's a very common problem that you end up locking the motorcycle up and stalling it. So to prevent that from happening, you need most of your pressure on the arch of your foot and just the toe on the brake pedal. When you're, all your braking's done, you get right to the center of the turn, the apex. You go down, foot goes right back to the ball, knee into the outside of the shroud. Another problem that I see often in riders is they don't look far enough ahead when they're entering a turn. Sometimes they're looking right over their front fenders. It's not near far enough. When you're entering a turn, what you do is you get closer to the turn. You, with your eyes, you focus on a spot that's a good, good stable pivot point for your front tire. Right when you get to that pivot point with your front tire, that's when you sit and apply the power and go through the turn. Where do I look at when I'm going into a turn? When I go into a turn, you always want to look for a good place that's stable for your front tire to plant. That way, you're standing all the way to that point. When your front tire hits that point, that's when you sit and exit the turn. As you exit and your speed gets greater, you look farther and farther in front. The final thing we're going to cover about cornering is exiting a turn. Remember, whether you're on a two-stroke or a four-stroke, exiting the turns, try not to over-rev the bike. If you ever notice on a magazine test, when they do a horsepower test on the chart, after the bike gets a certain RPM, actually the horsepower actually drops off. You don't want that. So again, try to get to a taller gear as quick as you can, a gear that will pull. Not a gear that bogs, but a gear that will pull. If you over rev the bike, it's not going to pull good out of the turn. As you exit the turn, remember to keep the C in your back. What the C does, it helps get rear wheel traction. You don't want to ride like this, where your back is arched back, or your back is straight. You kind of want to sit on your tailbone. Up here, I'm sitting on my crotch. That's incorrect. You want to sit on your tailbone. And what that does, that also keeps your center of gravity lower, which in turn 
helps the bike turn better in the corners. As you exit the turn, you're sitting towards the front of the bike, again, at the lowest farthest point forward on the seat. If you're too far forward, you're going to get too much wheel spin. If you're too far back, the front tire is going to wash out or you'll loop out. As you build up speed coming out of the turn, you slowly, gradually come up and get off the seat. Another aspect about exiting the turns is clutching. Don't forget, entering the turns, leave the clutch alone. But when you're exiting the turn, you also can use a clutch to help the bike get on the pipe. Use two fingers, keep one or two fingers on it. That's totally up to the rider's, rider's choice. I personally use two fingers, and it doesn't matter if you're on a two-stroke or a four-stroke. You need to get the, pipe, the bike on the pipe, clutch it on the way out. Well, you know, it's, it's really easy for uh, a rider to say, you know what, I don't really need to do school. I'm going to do this as a profession, and, and what do I need school for? But you never know what can happen in this sport. I mean, this sport is um, it's a sport that it can be here today and gone tomorrow, and you need to have something to fall back on. So you've got to have some kind of schooling um, to know what to do when you do get out of the sport of motocross. Most likely, your chances of making it as a professional motocross racer are like slim to none. So you've got to give yourself some sort of a backup. Um, I think the inspiration is just um, me hating to lose. I hated to lose racing, whether it was a novice or, or a pro. And that my inspiration was just being the best, being better than everybody. Um, when I first came in, I saw the guys that were the heroes and the guys that everybody looked up to and interviewed and were on TV. And now it's like, that's who I want to be. I don't want anybody to be better than me. I really can't stress the importance of body positioning, especially when it comes to keeping a C in your back and re-gripping at all times. Arm positioning is very important. You always want to keep your elbows up. Not too much. It's going to take too much energy to do this. You want to keep it right about here. It keeps pretty much a straight line. You could draw a straight line right here with, between your arm, your forearm, and your wrist. A lot of guys forget to re-grip, and when you're sitting, everything's good right here, and then you go to stand. If you don't re-grip, my hands didn't move. You've got a bend in your wrist. You never want this bend in your wrist right there. You do not want that. That's very dangerous, plus you don't have any strength that way. Never like this and never like this. This way, you have no strength. This way, it takes too much energy. Just nice and relaxed. Notice the angle between my forearms and my hands never changes from takeoff to landing. And also notice that you're always standing when you land off a jump. Well, as you all know, just about every track we go to is loaded with jumps. So one of the first things we're going to talk about is riding on the balls of your feet. It's important that you're on the balls of your feet during takeoff and landing on every jump. And when you do land off a jump, you must land with the power on. If you don't land with the power on, the bike's going to bottom. When the springs go down, they only have one place to go. They're going to recoil you, and it's going to spit you off whichever way you're leaning. So it's very important that you land with acceleration. By keeping the throttle pinned, what that does is keeps the bike from bottoming out. Once the bike bottoms out, it recoils and it'll spit a rider off whichever way he's leaning. And that's a very common problem. So if you land off a jump and you have no power on, the bike's going to go down towards a bottoming situation and it's going to recoil. So if you have the power on, it's going to stay in the stiffer part of the stroke. Always remember that. As important as it is for a rider to learn how to do a jump, it's equally important for a rider to know what to do if he comes up short on a jump. Okay, so all we do is get me on a spot out there, walk out there and find a jump, one of these ones out front, and I'll case it. How about the little triple? Good. Guys don't understand that when you land, you have to keep the power on because remember, under power, the suspension lifts. When you let off, the bike settles.
I think what uh, what drives me to keep riding and, and going to the tracks and working with guys is not only um, my love for the sport, but now I have a son, Totter, that's uh, 15 years old and he's just started getting into racing and he's uh, starting to become a, a, a really good, fluent rider. And um, I just love bringing him with me and watching him improve as well as the other riders that I'm working with. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's something that I really can't explain, but when you have your own son out there and he's doing what you did for a living and you can see that he's probably got more talent than you ever had when you were a kid, that's a ton of motivation for me. My advice to any of you guys that are gonna take motocross as a, uh, as a sport or a pastime is not to take it too seriously. In other words, always keep in the back of your mind that remember, not everybody's gonna make it in this sport. So the best advice that I could give to any of you guys is just do it for fun and whatever happens, happens. Just remember that you're gonna do your best when you're having fun and if you put too much pressure on yourself thinking, yeah, I gotta do good here, you know, otherwise I'm not gonna get a ride, I gotta do good at Loretta, I gotta do good at Ponca. Forget about that stuff. Just go out there and have a good time and let everything fall into place. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I hope you liked it. If you want to get a little more up close and personal, check out my website or I'll see you at the track. Later. It's going to go over a bump. Hold on. Oh my gosh. There could be rattlesnakes, there could be tarantulas, there could be scorpions. Maybe with tarantulas and scorpions, but snakes, like... I, uh, there was a snake right by my house last week. I tried to kill it. It was going across the street. Yeah. Scary. Like, was it a rattlesnake? Rattlesnake, yeah. yeah. And he, I pissed him off. I didn't kill him. I tried, and it just made him mad. Yeah? yeah. Were you trying to hit him? Yeah, I, with a rock. Oh, I right. got out of my, I was in this truck, and he's yeah. going across the street, and, um, you know, he's right near the, my neighbor's house, so I didn't want to... You know, like literally like 25 feet away from his front door so I uh, try to get kill him but huh. no avail do you know anyone who's ever been bitten no I have to say that after 32 years of racing motocross um, probably one of the coolest things that's come out of it for me is that um, I get to teach all you guys how to how to ride how to be better riders and how to be more fluent how to be more in control I can't imagine having a better job than what I have right now I'm very lucky um, I've earned it but I'm also very lucky I realize that I'm very lucky and um, you know it's something that's been a passion my whole life and um, uh, just we'll see what else that was probably a good way to cut it right there huh yeah.